Map fans, welcome back. Today we're looking at animation with QGIS Atlas. Let's get stuck in. <laughs> this is the third part in our series of looking at Google Earth Engine in QGIS. And if you remember last time, I was using the Python console. I've got some code here and when I run this, it connects to Google Earth Engine and pulls in the Sentinel 5P data on a monthly basis. Now over on the left you can see that I've got from October 2019 through to March 2020 and what we'd like to do in this video is using QGIS Atlas It's quantum baby create output for each month so we'll have a separate map for each month. In order to achieve this I'm going to use something called map themes and over on the left, you can see that we've got October 2019 through March 2020, and all of these layers are currently switched on. Now, in using map themes, if I turn these layers off like so, and I take the world map and slide it up to the top there, there we go. We've got the world map sitting over our Sentinel 5P data, and we've only got October 2019 showing. Now on the world map, I don't want it to obscure the data too much, so I'm just going to set the symbology for this. That looked okay. I can make out the countries of the world and it doesn't interfere with the data too much. I might change that in the future though. But we have got our world map symbology set and now I'm going to manage map themes. At the moment, we've got October 2019. That's the layer that's turned on and I'm going to add a new theme and call it Oct 2019. Okay, that. Next, I'm going to turn off the October 2019 and turn on November 2019. And I will create a new map theme here and call it Love 2019. Can you see a pattern emerging? I'm going to turn off November, turn on December, and guess what? We'll call this one Deck 2019. So I'll go through and do these now. There we are, I've done them all. I did make a little mistake there. I had to go back and correct January 2020. If you've not used map themes before, they're really helpful. If I go through now and choose December 2019, you can see that it turns off all of the layers and all we can see is December 2019. So the map theme kind of remembers how your layers are set in the layers panel. And the names of these map themes are also very important. They'll come back in a minute once we get into print layout. And the way we go to print layout. If we go up to project and then down to new print layout, this will create is a new print layout. It'll ask for a title. I'm not going to give it one. And that should just pop out as layout one. Now with print layout, if you've not used it before, then just imagine that this white sheet here is a sheet of paper. And on that, we are going to draw our map. So I'm going to use this button over here to add a new map and our cursor changes to crosshairs. Note that we've got snapping on, which is very useful. And I'm just going to put this in here. And our map is going to render. Our map has now rendered. And in the background over here, you can see that the map that we've drawn on here is actually mirroring what we've got in the main QGIS window. What we would like to do with this is use the Atlas and over on the right hand side where we've got item properties guides, we've also got an Atlas button. So if I click that Atlas button, there is a checkbox that says generate Atlas. If I turn that on, the first thing we're going to be asked for is a coverage layer. Now the coverage layer dictates what we're going to show and how many Atlas pages we're going to have. And it should pick up any shapefiles or Geo packages, vectors that are in our map. So if we have a look here, currently we've got world map. Now I could choose the world map and I could choose for the page name to be the name of a country and that might do. You can have a look at the other settings that are available as well in the Atlas tab. 
And also I'd like to go into item properties. And if we just scroll down here, there is a control that says controlled by Atlas. Now this item that we're currently on is our map and I like our map to be controlled by the Atlas. So I'm just gonna check that. And we're gonna go for the margin around the feature at 10%. Now what that means is in our Atlas settings, because we've got our world map and we have our name as the page name, each country is going to focus or control our map and we're gonna have a margin of 10% around a particular feature. So let's have a look what this looks like. If I go up to my Atlas and hit preview Atlas, then at the top, I've got a bunch of different countries and these are all the different pages that would be output by our atlas. Now let's choose a country. I'm going to go for Ecuador. And you can see how our map zooms in to that Ecuador polygon. We've got a 10% margin around the feature and that'll be one page of our atlas. So if I was to go up here and I was to export atlas's images, we'd have a different image for every country. Now that's great and it's very useful in its own right. But if you remember what we're trying to achieve here is have a different layer switched on for each page in our Atlas. And in order to achieve that, I'm going to go back to our main map. So I'll just minimize our print layout. And over here, I'm just going to count how many features we've got. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I've got six different layers that I need to turn on and off. Don't forget, we've got our map themes set up. Next, I'm going to create a new point layer. So I'll go up to layer, create layer, and new shapefile layer. I'm going to call this Atlas Guide. Didn't really matter what we call it. Um, and the name, I'm going to make a new field and call it Atlas. And it's going to be text data, and it's going to have seven characters in it. So I'll add that to my field list. There we go. It is a point layer. That all looks good. I'm going to OK that. And you'll see Atlas Guide pops up over here. I'm going to highlight it and then I'm going to edit it. And I'm going to add a point feature. I'm going to get this roughly at 0, 0. Somewhere in the middle. That looks good. I'll give it an ID of 1. And for the Atlas, I'm going to call this whatever our first layer is down here. And if you remember our map themes, here we've got October 2019, and I'm going to call it Oct 2019. So I'll just OK that, and there's our point. Now I'm going to open up the attribute table, just make sure the editing is still on. We've only got one point in here at the moment, but we have six layers that we need to turn on and off. So six different maps that we want to create, and I'm just going to copy that row and then paste it one, two, three, four, five. So we've got six in total. Now I'm gonna go into each of these and go to change. So that'd be instead of October, that's gonna be November. You get the picture, so I'll do that now. There we are, I've done that. And I'm just gonna save my edits. And that is what our attribute table now looks like. Excellent. So I'm going to use this as my coverage layer back in our print layout. So if I just go back to print layout, and I'm going to go to the Atlas, and instead of using the world map, I instead I'm going to use Atlas Guide. Now I'm going to check the thing that says hidden coverage layer because I don't want that point to be visible, so that will hide it from view. And for the page name, we're going to use Atlas. I'm just going to switch on and off the preview, and that should bring in our page names. And there you can see we've got October 2019. If I change that to November 2019, and then December, you might notice that nothing is happening. And why not? Well, if we go into our item properties, and we've got this controlled by Atlas set. Now for our layers, I want the layers to follow our map theme. And if you look over here, in our map themes now, we have got December, so I can set that. And we've got February. 
Now it's taken quite a long time to redraw these, so I'm not going to worry about that too much now. Now what would be cool is if we could get our layer to follow the map theme according to a field type, and that field would be our atlas field. Now unfortunately it's not picking up the fact that we have a shapefile with a string in there, and that is a bit annoying. So I found a way around this, I think that may be a bug but I'm not 100% sure. And instead we're going to use an expression, and I'm going to edit that. Here we are in Expression String Builder, and I'm just going to look for Atlas, and this brings up a bunch of variables relating to the Atlas. And where's the one I'm looking for? Page name. So if I use Atlas page name, that should use the Atlas page name in order to find the map theme and therefore display it on our canvas. Let's OK that. That looks all right, and we can do a little test here and go back to October 2019. And you'll see that the map's redrawing. Again, this takes a little bit of time. And there it is. Now, my internet connection is really poor today, so just keep in mind that this could take a while to draw. Now, when we want to output this, we can just go up to Atlas and export Atlas as images. And if I click on that, you'll see that I can make a new folder and call it Atlas Demo. I'll select that folder. And we'll get this message about WMS parameters, but I'm just going to close that for the time being. And the export resolution is currently set to 300 dpi, which is really, really high. And I'm just using this as a demo, so I'm just going to wind that back to 90 dpi. And that should be good for, for the web or for screens. And I'm going to hit save. And you'll see that it begins exporting each of our six pages. Once it's exported, you'll see that we get a success message, and I can click on that to open up the directory. And here are our outputs, and they'll be numbered with each page number. And if I just click on this, I can cycle through these and see how NO2 levels are changing each month across the world. Very, very cool. Now with those images, you can use a number of different programs. There are online uh, apps as well that can smash these together and make a GIF. So that would be the final stage. And if you are going to use these tutorials, please let me know. Uh, get in touch via Twitter. Give us a hashtag birdgis or an at or something like that. And post your own GeoGIFs. I'd be really interested to see what people come up with. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. If you've got any questions at all, please post them in the comments below. We've been getting lots of good comments recently. And happy mapping.